We just returned home from a wonderful six week vacation. I didn't want to come back, but obligations were calling to us. And a benefit of being here is that we can work on the KX100. Making this chassis wiring was the last progress we made on this bike, and now we can attach electrical components to it and build an electrical system. Something I thought about though was that I think it would be better if I moved this entire bunch of wires to the other side of the motorcycle. I didn't realize it as I was making this, but it's a better place for them because they won't crowd the radiator cap and there's more room to tuck them up closer to the frame, away from danger. It took you six weeks to figure that out? Sure did. Even on the road. It was always on my mind. It was always on my mind. That's old Willie. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pull out these wires. Is it gonna fit on the other side? I think so. I'm Just worried. Go over here. I left these a little bit longer than they really need to be. And they'll end up pretty much in the same spot. The wires will go there. I'll figure that out. And look here, there's even a nice eyelet that I can put them through. Yeah. Give that a little time and it'll grow up to be an eye. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look big enough. You don't think they'll go through there, huh? I think they will. I may have tried it. I've, it it's been a couple days since I was looking at this. I think they will fit. You know what I can do is put a little spacey spacer in there to widen it out a little bit. So they wouldn't have fit. You know what? <laughs> I knew no, that. You know what? <laughs> They'll fit. <laughs> okay, it's tight and look. Okay. I will space this out though because there's not much room for the wires to go through here especially if I wrap them up with a few layers of tape. This is a new filming setup for us, and I don't think Jake realized quite how shiny his forehead is <laughs> going to look in here <laughs> from every angle. Some people have a gleam in their eye. I have a gleam above my eyes. <laughs> I think it's a lot better on this side. Remember how it was over there? Now, see that? Are we talking about your forehead or? The wires. Oh, okay. How do the wires look over here? I think that's 100% better. And yeah, now it looks like it, you had some intention when you put them on this it side. It does, it's got the eyelet there. Yep. That's, that's what does it. The first thing I'm going to connect to these wires is a combination switch that goes on the left handlebar. It's going to control the headlight, the turn signals, and the horn. I'm putting this on first because it's a really integral part of the system. Eight terminals that we need to figure out. You eight terminals? <laughs> this is the most complicated electrical part we have left to install. It's a factory switch from a Z125 street bike, genuine Kawasaki part. Before I do anything electrically, I'll mount it to the handlebar so I can route the wires where they should be and see where I need to connect them to the motorcycle. I had a Z125. You did, until I sold it. <laughs> You've gone through a few motorcycles in the time it's taken me to try to build the KX100. The latest is this CRF230, which works, but it's kind of heavy, isn't it? Yeah. A little bit heavy. I think you'll really enjoy this one in the future. <laughs> I'll put this switch on here now. What's really nice about this switch is that there's a hole in the front of the handlebar if you circle around here. And that hole lines up with a little peg in the switch. No peg. <laughs> right there. See? It should line up anyway. I think it's a little bit too tight up against that grip. I need to trim this grip a little bit. I don't want to move the grip out or enlarge in the hole. <laughs> but if I trim
trim this little protuberance on the grip, it should work. I'll use a blade to take it off. I cut this all the way around the bar, but it's still stuck. Oh, you know what it is? Glued. Ew. So I'll have to just pick and peel away at this. I got that excess rubber cleaned off there. Now we'll see how the switch fits on. I think that'll work. That pin is in the hole. Oh! I was just going to ask you how nice that looked. Did you scratch it? I think it's fine. Before I put this together, I'm going to eliminate this plug and wire, which is just some kind of pass-through connection. It goes from here to right here. I don't know what the original intention was, but I don't need it. So I'll cut it off, just like a doctor. He does have a medical card. <laughs> this was from the anesthesiology department down at the hospital. Yeah. You know, anesthesiology, they ah, just put you to sleep, but don't worry. If you die, we'll bill your family. So I'll cut this wire. I hope I'm cutting the right ones. Cut this off. I don't need that. Now pull that, if you could, this little plug. Should come right out. Yeah. So we just eliminated a lot of confusion for this. Now we'll put this onto the handlebar. I'll speed up tightening down these screws. I feel like we're getting off to kind of a slow start. That's how the videos happen sometimes, don't they? Sometimes. You see my shaky hand with the screwdriver there? You must not have because you didn't say anything. I saw you fumbling around. Well, it's the long neck version. So one little move with the wrist and I'm all over the place. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Flip that switch. High beams, low beams. None of it works yet though. Now comes the interesting part. We need to wire this such that something happens when you work those switches. This plug confused me for a little while. Didn't know what I was going to do as far as attaching these to each other. Originally, I'd planned on using bullet connectors for all the wire connections because I've seen them on lots of motorcycles before. Figured it for a good choice, but I didn't want to cut off this plug just to reattach new terminals on each wire. This is the solution to my problem. I thought that this might be a specialty Kawasaki plug, but it's not. It's a common standardized connector. Snaps in place just like it's meant to be there. This is part of a full variety tray of wire connectors that I bought. Got it from a place that knows how to make little plastic things. It seems like a pretty good kit. It's already broken. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell me how good it is now. This is Amazon's choice. I was buying with confidence. Did you buy this whole set for that one connector? I did. They got you. <laughs> they got me. That's how they get you. In addition to the nine pin connector, this fine set also includes a lot of other options. That you have never needed. That I may be able to take advantage of. <laughs> the way these work is you crimp the metal terminal onto the wire and after it's connected, the terminal snaps into the back side of the housing. That looks really nice. I sound confident but the key to it working is knowing what wire goes where. Did you plan ahead so it's just gonna be green to green, red to red? No, not exactly. This is a wiring diagram for the motorcycle, and here's a Kawasaki factory diagram of the handlebar switch. I studied both of those pictures and created a revised schematic. This is the same as what I just showed on the screen, except that I altered the colors of the wires coming out of the handlebar switch to match what they are in real life. So as long as I do what's on the drawing, everything should work. As long as the drawing is correct. As long as the drawing is right. How about we attach some terminals? All right. I 
should be able to use the same tool as I used last time. Oh, your quality crimpers. Quality tools. Quality with a K. I'll start off with this orange wire. This is the 12 volt positive wire that's going to power the headlight. Are you gonna show yourself making every single one of these eight connections? If I do, it'll be really quickly. I think I'll do one to show the process. Didn't you show the process in the last video? Similar. If you wanna be boring, that's okay, I'll film it. I'm just trying to make a video that has some good information, but also doesn't put people to sleep. Trying. Trying. Well, let's wrap this up then. <laughs> I'm trimming this wire so it fits into the terminal correctly. The terminal fastens to the wire in two places. Right here, it crimps onto the bare wire to make an electrical connection. That plays. Now I'll do the second crimp, which only grips the insulated part of the wire to add strength and protection against careless yankage. That's such an overused expression. <laughs> Should try to be more original. Well, there's the finished terminal. Not real pretty, but I think it'll work. Let's see if it goes into that housing. How much did those housings cost? I think it was 10 or $12 for the set. So it was affordable housing. Pristine, exquisite. <laughs> Orange needs to connect to blue and yellow. So I think the safest way to do this is plug this in Blue and yellow's right there. So orange needs to be this one. Just like that. Seven more to go. It's been a few weeks since we filmed the clip you just watched. I edited all of the footage up to that point. Gave myself a haircut. I was in a dance recital. You were fantastic. Thank you. Camera girl keeps up with dancers half her age. Look, their faces haven't even cleared up yet. <laughs> hey, knock it off with the jokes. You want me to trip? I also ordered a couple items for the KX100 that I'll show you guys in a minute. And I finished putting together the terminals for this plug. You didn't miss anything interesting. The interesting part will be a little bit later when we turn on the power and see if the wiring is right and these switches do what I want them to. I still need to snap this last wire into the connector. I left it loose because I wanted to show you after having some practice installing these terminals, this looks just as bad as the first one I did. <laughs> Maybe worse. <laughs> it's functional, so I'm not going to change it, but I'm disappointed enough in the way these are turning out that I bought a new set of crimping ply, and it should be in this packet. I don't know for sure that the problem is the pliers, but I've been skeptical of these from the start because I had to modify them to make them work at all. The problem could also be with the operator, but I don't feel incompetent. I bought this tool because it's referenced in the questions and answers for the connectors that I got. Thomas Bowles recommends it and he seems like a trustworthy guy, so I thought it might be worth the money. That looks a little bit different than what I had before. <laughs> I'll say. Hopefully it makes a better crimp. I don't know if Iwis is a good brand or not. Tool feels a little bit sloppy. How about we do a test crimp? I am interested in this. This is really, a, I am. This wire is stripped on both ends. That way, if I make a mistake, I have a second chance. I don't know which of these crimping holes to use. The three on the right are my choices for the bare wire section of the terminal, and these other two are for the insulated part. I'll try out the medium spot on this side and the small one over here, unless you have any objections. Nope. Try this out now. Well, the terminal fits into the pliers. That's a good sign. 
Don't you think that's a good sign? You know what I'm thinking about? I want a hamster. A hamster? <laughs> okay. Just one? You, you must not be very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> So this crimp didn't even crimp the whole wire. You see those stragglers? Ooh. That looks terrible. It's user error. <laughs> it's user error. I think I wasted $19 on this. I'll try one more time. What a lot of trouble to put some wires together. I wish you were better at it. Me too. <laughs> I figured it out. The problem with my crimp job was the order of operations. I crimped the bare wire first and this part second. I should have done the opposite because the wire is big enough that it doesn't nestle down into the terminal like it's supposed to until I crimp the back side. Whoa. You see that gap? Yeah. I noticed right away that that was wrong. If I crimp, yeah. Yeah, have me take a look next time. It'll save you some trouble. If I crimp the front part first with the wire at that funny angle, here's what happens. But if I do it the other way around, I get a much better result. And to be sure it wasn't just good luck, I did another one. Ooh. And another one. Now some viewers may be skeptical. Maybe you didn't actually crimp those. Maybe I just snuck in a professional. Maybe. I hope you trust me. I'm not going to make an example crimp because I'm tired of crimping. I don't even want to say the word crimp. But we will move forward using the IWIS pliers because this is a great improvement over my previous work, which looks like camera girl threw it on the ground and stomped on it with your high-heeled shoe. <laughs> I need to plug this in before I decide to change it. Did it sound like I was endorsing the iWIS pliers a minute ago? I hope not. I wasn't. They'll probably break. I don't endorse anything except free thinking which may be impossible to endorse. The handlebar switch is completely installed on the motorcycle. I think the next thing we should do is work on the stuff that it switches. The headlight portion is already done. I have the high beam and low beam wires connected directly to the plug and the negative is tied into the chassis wiring. I soldered it together, heat shrinked it when you weren't looking. For the turn signals, we don't have time to do the turn signals in this video because there's four of them. I have to make brackets and I want to get this video out so you guys can see it. I love it when you make brackets. Oh, this is so exciting. Everything just got more exciting for me. Next time though. What color are the brackets going to be? Metal. Oh, <gasps> my favorite color. <laughs> we have time for the horn though. You want to work on the horn? All right. I ordered the horn at the same time I ordered the pliers, so it should be the other item in this package. Here. This is a six volt horn. I ordered a six volt horn. Does that say six volts? There, six volts. Checks out. Let's figure out how to put this on the motorcycle. I think it should go on this side because the radiator is over here. Less room for a horn. I know where it goes already. Very easy. I'll bolt the horn on right here and bend it over so it faces frontwards. That's convenient. Don't even need to make a bracket. The only possible issue I can think of is if the horn interferes with the plastic shroud that goes right here. So I'll find that part and see how it fits on there. Is that it right on top? Wrong side. Here we go. So this goes on here like 
that. I think it'll work. It's designed so the shroud contacts this guard. In fact, you can see some rub marks right here. So if I put the horn between the two parts, it'll be fine. It'll just shim the body work out 30 thousandths of an inch, however thick that is. I'll mount the horn to the motorcycle now temporarily so I can see where it needs to be bent. Got a good angle right there? Yeah. There's your head. Why don't you come around here to my oh, from there's the top. Your big arm. <laughs> from the top, from the top. Okay, there's your hairy knee. I've got this sharp pointy thing lined up with those louvers and I'll scribe exactly where I need to bend this metal. With as much hair as you have on your arms and your knees, you'd think you'd have more on your head. I'm not in charge of those things. <laughs> I just live in here. Are you going to bend that by hand? I probably could. You really stepped up on the quality of this horn. The metal of the device, just about the same thickness as the packaging. <laughs> Maybe it's for extra resonance and tone when you sound the horn. How innovative. I'll use the vise, or maybe the handbrake, or... I can't bend it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. These will do the job. I think they're rated for this soup can gauge metal. We may not be making a new bracket, but we're modifying a bracket. Let's see how it fits. Didn't work. There we go. I can't complain about that. Not bad. It could have come like that from the factory. I think so. Look, the paint even matches. Black. <laughs> now we need to hook up the wires. These are one quarter inch flat terminals. Not sure if I have any of those on hand. I bet I could buy a 700 piece kit though that'll have what I need. While you were falling down, <laughs> I found Something that'll work. One quarter inch flat connectors. Put them on. My diagram, my diagram says. I'm trying to blow that footprint off. <laughs> Didn't work. Somebody stepped on my picture. It was you. Can't deny it. The horn needs green and green and yellow. That's these two. I need to reroute these wires a little bit to where I want them to be permanently. That way I'll know exactly how long to cut these. I got the wires in a good place, close to the frame. They don't get bound up by the steering. And I added some tape to make it look organized. The horn wires are coming out back here. So now we can cut these to length and put on the connectors. I'm taking off these plastic insulators because I'm going to use heat shrink instead, which I think looks nicer. The problem I have with heat shrink is I forget to put it on the wire until it's too late. So I have to cut off whatever I just crimped or soldered, put the heat shrink on there, and start over again. Every time! But I got lucky here because I realized my error before I finished crimping the terminal. That's fortunate. So all I wasted was a few seconds. And with this project, I'm not really counting seconds. Seconds is my favorite part of dinner. Except for maybe firsts and dessert. Is dessert part of dinner? Yeah. Jacob hardly ever eats dessert. Mr. Garage here is too fancy for ice cream. I feel bad for the cows. Okay, the horn is connected. I'm not sure if it's hooked up right because there aren't positive and negative markings on these terminals. But if it's wrong, I'll find out. Somehow. <laughs> Smoke, maybe. Or sizzling. Those are good indicators. When I rerouted the wires for this handlebar switch, I took off the upper headlight bracket so they could go on this side of the fork. But now, the bracket doesn't fit in there anymore. It still needs to go this way at least a quarter of an inch, and it's already pinching on this side. So we'll take a little bite out of it right here. I'll use, 
It was so symmetrical and yeah, happy hugging frog. It was a happy hugging frog until I bent its mouth down. I think it's the way it has to be. Just do it. I'll use the drill press with a hole saw. I say that casually, but for me, a drill press is an extravagant tool. That means he didn't buy it. I never would buy a drill press. My brother gave this to me, and I'm very appreciative of it. Thank you, brother. Even though it is a wee drill press. Ooh, there you go, commenting on the size. <laughs> it's portable. So I'll get this plate clamped onto the table. I'm pretty excited about this, using my new tool, making a cut in a way I've never done before. Okay, the bracket is where I want it. Originally, I was going to put the camera on the tripod to do this, but Camera Girl wants to see the drill press in action. So, come on over here. Ready? Yes. I can't complain about that. I got the cut I want. Was it worth your while? Oh yeah. To watch? I liked it. Doing this maneuver with a hand drill would be really difficult. While I have this off the motorcycle, I'll drill a couple more holes in the sides of the bracket to mount the front turn signals. Ah, so it got you in the mood. I feel like drilling holes. These have been in the box for at least a couple years now. You shouldn't be proud of that. I screwed the bracket to this board and the board is clamped to the machine. It took me a little while to figure this all out. It would have been quicker with a hand drill. <laughs> but I've got the drill press. Want to drill a hole? Let's drill a hole. I don't think that this is the drill press for you. I'm looking at the warning and it says you shouldn't wear a necktie while you're operating this. Do Can not. I wear my silk scarf? <gasps> to reduce the risk of injury, user must read and understand the operator's manual. It seems to me that to reduce risk of injury, you should watch what you're drill pressing and you shouldn't be reading something. You should be paying attention. Pay attention. We have an important update. The turn signals didn't fit into the hole. So I need to step up one size on the drill bit. I'm being very conservative in how big these holes are because there's not a lot of extra material right here. Looking back, I would have made this bracket a little bit wider in that area. So this time, I'm not going to clamp anything down. Which is foolish because if the drill bit gets bound up in this bracket, it'll immediately start spinning and chop up my hand before I even have a chance to look up from my owner's manual. Now we'll try it. And this will work. Yeah. I don't know which way it's going to point, but you get the idea? Yeah. This has been bothering me. This little corner right here. You see that corner? Yeah. I'll round that over. Then we'll put it back on the motorcycle and call it a day. The headlight bracket fits again. There's enough clearance for the wires and the throttle cable. I would have put the headlight back on too, but I made a mistake earlier and now I can't. A very simple consideration that should have occurred to me didn't because I was in a rush to get a head start on the turn signals. It's very obvious. There's people watching this video who can figure out what I did wrong. The next time we work on this, I'll solve the problem I just created and probably finish the electrical system. By the end of that video, we should have blinkers blinking and horn horning. <laughs> if you're interested in this project and you'd like to see it from the beginning, I'll put a link for that up on the screen. And if you're not interested, you made a wrong turn somewhere, but there's worse places on the internet than here, so 
count yourself lucky. Thanks for watching.